Appreciate you coming out here. You're the brave. You're the strong. You're the mighty. You fought the rain. Good missionary material in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to just talk a little bit about the fact that this Bible here, this Bible is above everything else a missionary Bible. Can you say it? Come on, say it with me. Missionary Bible. Missionary. This Bible is a missionary Bible. It is a missionary Bible. And I want to read out of Genesis 12, 1 through 3, which is really the first scripture on missions that's in, that is found in the Bible. I'm going to, you're going to become a missions expert as you come to this house. And let me just say this. I want to tell you, when I sit and look what's going on and where we are going, only God can do this. It's the work of the Holy Spirit to touch people's hearts, to have people go, to have people like Isabel Johnson. You've got a great thing going in North in uh, Brazil. But you know what happens is God touches your heart. He touches your heart enough that you want to make sacrifices and want to go beyond your comfort zone and do things you've never done before. And it's just like a, how can I say it? It's hard to put it in words. We try. But it's like your world gets enlarged. And you get your eyes off of you. Amen. And we live in a little very microcosm of our little world, going to work, meeting our needs, our funding, of our supply of our house. But when you go abroad, it forces you to broaden where you are. And you just cannot, you cannot leave the same. I'm still, you know what, Jeremy? We were in Kwakwa. The, the kids' shoes, were you there in that one where they had the left foot on the right foot and the right foot on the left foot? And how they pointed out like this, like, like, so they're going, I said, what is with these shoes? They said, they're completely worn out. There's no, there's no sole. So he's riding on the edge of a good sole. They don't even get that. He's got to swap the shoes. I said, I mean, you cannot, that just burns in my mind. I took out 300 rent. I said, how much are your shoes? Between two and 300. Get him a good pair. And I'm believing God we're going to do a lot more back there. Aren't you? Don't you feel that, Paul? It's like, oh my goodness, there's so much to be done. Out of Genesis 12, by the way, I want to give a shout out to Navida. Where are you, Navida? Stand up, Navida. Navida, you're just an amazing, 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 amazing lady. Thank you. And all the staff, you know, Kimani, uh, just a tremendous job. Thank you, Kimani. You know, there's a lot of work to do all this. Out of Genesis 12, it says, Now the Lord said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, from your father's house, to a land that I will show you, and I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you, and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Holy Spirit, help us. As we hear this word afresh, let it be a fresh word. Let it touch our hearts and let us and bring, bring us courage to step out into what you're calling us to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Genesis 12, 1 through 3 is the main theme of the entire Bible. This is a missions Bible. The main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. And... We have to understand that uh, we got to get the mind of God, the will of God. And many people out there in Christendom, missions is a side thing. It's like what's what somebody else does. Therefore, we need our minds renewed according to Romans 12, 1 through 3, 1 through 2. And it talks about this verse 2. It says that, you're, that we'd be transformed by the renewing of our minds that we may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. You know, if you don't change your thinking according to the word, you can live your whole life and miss what God has for you. The main thing, I got Roger. Oh, my goodness. If I had known you were here, I'd have you come up and speak. Roger just came back from Ukraine and Poland. I just can't wait. Don't, don't, don't leave when I talk to you. I might have you do the benediction. Amen. So, when I see, when you, when you stay in your little four walls, there's no way you can fulfill the call of God. 
And then if pastors don't have a vision, they're, you know, it's the blind leading the blind. And all we talk about is fellowship and hanging together and, and barbecues and going to each other's house and studying the Bible. And meanwhile, the, uh, there's so many people all around the earth that are saying, will someone come and show me the way? I mean, I really am open if someone would just tell me. And I hate to say it, sometimes we get a little jaded in America because in, in America, you can spend $100 to get one person saved. But in foreign countries, you can spend $1 and you have 100 saved. I know that it's a bit off, but it's about that way, folks. People are so, just so ripe. It's just, if you tell me about it, I'll accept it. We're in Kwakwa, we'd go through the whole thing. Who wants to receive Jesus? Hundreds of hands. So we start again. No, no, let me explain to you what I just said. I said, go through the whole thing over again. Who wants to receive Jesus? More would raise their hands. You know what I'm talking about? And so we said, well, that was unusual. That was just one crowd. But every night it was that way. Was, am I making this up? Every night. And so I said, Jesus, the harvest is great, but the labors are few. It says in 1 Timothy 6, verse 20, and I want to read a couple of scriptures here because I think it's appropriate if we take a look at the, at the dialogue that's in the world today, which is so messed up. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 20 says, Oh, Timothy, guard what is committed to you, to be committed to your trust, and avoiding the profane and idle babblings and contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge. You know what? There's a lot of babbling in churches. And... Uh, I'm just amazed. I hate to say this. I'm amazed. I go to other churches. You know, I'm, my wife and I, Pastor Anna, we just hunker down and do what we think the Word of God tells us to do. You pick up your head, you look around, and you find out people aren't doing what you're doing. And they call you strange. Seriously. Strange. Uh, st strange? What do you mean strange? It's in the Bible. And so this is, I just talked to Pastor Ted, or Brother Ted. This, just yesterday, he says to me, the first time I went up to his camp meeting, I felt the Lord said, speak on missions. And especially evangelism. Here they came forward, these pastors. The second time I hit a real strong missions. I hit missions right between the eyes. I took a baseball bat and I hit it right between the eyes, just as hard as I could. About 200 pastors come up, altar call, crying out to God, weeping. Because they realized that's not what they were doing. So I called, talked to Pastor Ted. He said, you coming again? In fact, you're a missions pastor. You're there to teach. And I'm going, doesn't everybody do this? And I'm finding out, no, they don't. Well, we're not here to clap our, pat our back. That's not the issue. But the issue is this, is what the scripture says, that we get caught up with controversies and ideas that are really scrambled in Jesus' name. They're not focused on what God focuses on. You know, focus on what God focuses on. That's a real smart thing to do. When God says, hey, 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 this is what's most important. You say, well, I don't totally see it yet. Well, just hang with me and I'll make it plain for you in Jesus' mighty name. But we have to understand this. Uh, we, have to have our, we have to change our minds and realize that missions, and it takes a while for you to get this. You won't get it overnight. But missions is not a side issue with God. It's the issue. It's the reason the church is here. It's the reason he keeps you on the planet. And somehow, some way, your purpose in life has got to be tied up with reaching the lost in the nations of the world. Somewhere, somehow, it's got to be tied up in that. Either you're giving towards it, you're praying towards it, or you're even, and everything you do is towards impacting the world that Christ may be known and heard. And if your vision isn't that, it's messed up. You got to get your mind renewed in Jesus' name. Amen. But this is a mission Bible. And uh, if you think about this, the first call that Abraham received, back then his name was Abram, that God gave me, said, Abram, I need you to separate yourself from your familiar surroundings. Separate yourself from the way of the world. Can I tell you? If you're going to follow Jesus, he's going to call you to separate. 
separate from what the world says is cool and what the world says is important and what God says to, to, to what God says Im, to what's important. And he had a promise. We get this out of Hebrews 11.10. That he looked for a city whose foundation maker was God. So he looked for a land that was in the natural. There was a promised land. But he was looking for something higher. He's looking for a spiritual land where God was taking to him. But he had to have him separate. God needs to separate you and realize that you've got to understand that this promise has an obligation to it. You've got to, if, you know, God wants to bless you, but you've got to listen to step out and do things you've not done before. You've got to learn to separate. And sometimes separation comes down to this. Separate from the vacation you were going to to go do something for God. Forego pushing white hot sand through your party sausage toast for one week and go to a nation where you might not, you won't have the opportunity. You'll have to be out there doing it for God, walking streets for God, going into schools for God, going into hospitals for God, preaching in churches for God. You say, well, I just lost that vacation. No, you gained something far greater. Amen. But you got to separate. There has to be a separation. There has to be a separation from what you want to what God wants. There has to be. Otherwise, you can go through life making excuses why you're not involved with missions. And you might even say, well, that's not called for me. No, no, it is your call. I'm here to tell you why it is. If you just hang with me, amen? But I'm telling you, this Genesis 12, 1 through 3 is the original statement from God for the Great Commission. When Jesus gave the great commissions in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Acts, that was not a new idea. That was an old idea that had been written out a long time ago. It was in the heart of God. The heart of God was that God says, I will bless you. But in blessing you, Abraham, through you, all the nations of the earth will find out about the blessing, which is Jesus Christ. There's no greater blessing you can give to a human being than Jesus Christ. Amen. And Jesus, I'm telling you what, simply reviewed the message. Now, let's go to Luke's gospel and go to the end of the gospel of Luke, chapter verse 24. And if you read here in verse 36, he says, now, and this is how Jesus resurrected from the dead. He's in his resurrected body. Now, as they said these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said, peace to you. I love Jesus always showing up. Jesus is cool. You know what? Jesus could knock at the door. Hi, this, this is Jesus the Messiah is out here. Okay, Jesus at the door, get the door. But don't you love it the way he just, whoosh. I think Jesus likes a good joke. I think Jesus likes a good, uh, he likes humor, Amen. Because he's always going, peace, peace, toast. So he wouldn't say that. Can you imagine looking at their face? How many like it? He just shows her, ah! peace, peace, be still. <laughs> peace, be still. Take a, take a chill pill. I love him for that. For those who are little pranksters in heaven, think about things you can do. <laughs> I can't hardly wait. But anyway... It says here, verse 37, but they were terrified and frightened and supposedly had seen a spirit. They're still, they're still shaken. And he said to them, why are you troubled and why do doubts rise in your hearts? Behold, my hands and my feet, that it is I myself, and handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. So he's talking them down, okay? He's talking them down. And he says to them, um, and, wh and, wh and while they still not believed for joy and marveled, he said to them, um, do you have anything? Um, you, have the, uh, you have food. Do you have any food? Do you have any fish? I was trying to say fish. I just figured you'd be eating fish. Do you have anything? Do you have any, uh, any food to eat? And so then he takes it and begins to eat. So he's, he's chilling them down. He's so real. Jesus is so real. Touch me. Look at the hands. Look at, look at the holes in my hands. One day we'll see those ourselves. So they gave him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb. And he took it and ate in their presence. 
Uh, imagine, just picture that. He's eating and they're looking at each other. <laughs> Do you get the humor? I mean, they're still, you know, now they had robes so their knees could be shaken, but you just see the slight vibration in the robe. So, but, but you think about this. Jesus is now speaking to the, to the central portion of the leadership he's invested in in three and a half years. So that these, these things are going to be important that he says. He said, these are the words which I spake to you while I was with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. Now get this, verse 45. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Now think, of, this is Jesus. This is not any teacher. This is the author of the book. Now we have the Holy Spirit to teach us, but they, they had Jesus himself, the second person of the Trinity, who sits at the right hand of God, show up, <laughs> eat some fish, eat some honeycomb, and he says, he gave them understanding, listen, he says, I am going to break it down for you. I'm going to give you the cliff notes of the whole Old Testament. New Testament hadn't been written yet. I'm going to break it down for you. I'm going to break it down so you understand that you'll keep the main thing, the main thing. And don't allow stupid people in church to confuse your brain so you chase down things that are not the main thing. Well, he has a THD. He's overeducated. Beyond his intellect. And he opened understanding. They understand. We need to get God. God, show me by the word of God. But there's something about obeying by going to missions. Your, your mind begins to open. And your heart begins to get enlarged. And every time you go, it gets bigger. And the more you take the word, it's like you shift from yourself of my job, my need, my lawn, my kids, my stuff, and where I go. We get in a routine, don't we? Go to work. First, but hopefully let's get it right. Get up, get a shower, please. <laughs> Come over here, get dressed, please. You, then you go to work. Fine, you got your little route, got your lunch thing going on, and you drive back. Hopefully don't turn on TV, but if you do, minimize it in Jesus' name. There's too much to do for Jesus. But anyway, that's your own thing. And then you go to bed, and you go do the same thing. Think about it. And after a while, we think this is it. No, 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 no. That's not it. You ready for what Jesus is saying? Then he said to them, now think about this. This is summation now. This is, a, this is him taking all the Old Testament and summarizing it. Here it is. This, thus is written, and thus it was necessary for Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations. Beginning at Jerusalem. And you're witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, the tarry in your city of Jerusalem, that you may be endued with power from on high. Why? Why am I being endued with power from on high? That you can fulfill the very, the very goal that I have in the Old Testament Scriptures. It's not even in the New. He's not even talking about the New. The New's not been written. I'm just telling you, the Old Testament Scriptures is bringing about men to salvation. Because let me tell you what. He says repentance and remission of sins. Let me just back up here. Romans 5.12, it says that through one man, sin entered into the world, and through that sin, death came upon all men. And we know what sin does. Sin separates human beings from God. And when you're separated from God, a curse shows up. It just shows up. It's just the law. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. 
Death is a curse. Separation from God is a curse. So because mankind have sin in the earth, and they sin, therefore they live a cursed life. And he said the message of the Bible is, I mean, he had to go through who Jesus was throughout the Old Testament, who Jesus is throughout the Bible. You can see Jesus, the symbol of Jesus. Jesus is Moses' rod. You hold out Jesus, he'll open up a way for you. Jesus was the commander-in-chief when he showed up in, in, in front of Joshua. He said, who are you? He said, I'm the, I'm the captain of the army of the Lord of hosts. Take your shoes off. The ground is on you, that you stand is holy. Jesus is the one that took him into the promised land. Jesus is the one, when, when all those snakes were biting those Israelites because they got into disobedience with God, they were being bitten and dying by the scores. He said, take a snake, fashion it, stick it on a pole. Whoever sees that snake, they'll be healed. This Jesus was that snake on that rock, on, on, on that rod, because Jesus was made sin. Throughout the Bible, you see Jesus. And Jesus always is bringing redemption. He's always dealing with the sin. He's always taking out the sin. The whole Old Testament, the sacrificial system, is all about sacrifice. You, we put our sin on this goat or on this uh, cow or on this sheep, and we relay it to God, and God says, that'll be Jesus one day. He's going to take the sin of the world. So he said, listen, the whole thing focuses on Jesus taking the sins away from mankind and paying the penalty of sin. But it doesn't stop there. But you've got to take this message to the nations of the world. I bless you by taking sin off your life, but I also commission you to go and tell somebody else that they can have it taken off too. Because when you receive Christ, your sins are forgiven. And the Bible says... Romans 3.13, he who knew no sin became sin. No, that's uh, 2 Corinthians 5.21. 3.13, it says that Christ became a curse for us because the Bible says, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Jesus became the curse. Jesus took the curse. Jesus took the very thing that separated us from God and took it out of the way. Now the curse is freed from humanity. And all our job is, is tell people, when you receive Jesus, your sins are lifted, and the curse goes, and the blessings come. The curse is lifted, sin goes, the blessings come. What kind of bondages does, does the curse bring? It brings poverty. It brings confusion. It brings hatred. It brings bondage. It brings oppression. It brings, it brings sickness. It brings disease. It brings hopelessness. It brings discouragement. It brings every kind of thing that robs you of life. That's what the curse brings. But Jesus breaks the curse. So what he needs you and I to do is go to tell people, do you know the curse is broken through Jesus Christ? Do you know that all you have to do is receive what Jesus did? This is what the Bible is. Jesus said it right here. All the Bible is all about the sin has been paid for. The curse has been lifted. Go tell. Go tell. Go tell. Go tell. Go tell. Go tell. He said, if you go tell, they'll listen. They'll believe. The sin is taken off their life and the curse is lifted. That's why wherever you go, you know, the, the, the United Nothing goes around spending billions of dollars on all what they do. But I'm telling you something. We have the powerful Holy Ghost and the Word of the living God. And if you understand this, we got the God who made the universe, who the God who made the world, the God that made you, jumps on the inside of you through the Holy Ghost, lives on the inside of you, said, I've given you all power. Will you march through this earth like you own it? Would you march through these nations like you own it? In Jesus' name. And would somebody go? Would somebody have enough courage to take the simple word and make a stand and saying, all I got to do is tell them. Tell them. Your sins are forgiven. The curse is lifted. Tell them. Wow. So when Jesus, in Matthew 28, 
1920, he said, go, and, go make disciples of all nations. That's old news. That goes back to Genesis 12, 1 to 3. That's old news. He's just rehearsing, trying to say, let me tell you what it's about. It's not just about you. Can you take your eyes off you for a few moments? And put your eyes on people who have never heard. Put your eyes on people that make a fraction of the money that you make. Put your eyes on people that don't have clothes put on their bodies and are just, I sometimes say, God, we're so blessed. We don't realize how blessed we really are. Hot water comes on just like that. That's rare. I've taken showers in Mexico. It was in the winter. They said, you're staying here. The whole place was concrete. Concrete wall, concrete everything. It was cold. I froze in the thing. Then I had to take a shower. And that was the coldest water. It was colder than a well digger's behind. <laughs> I mean, you had to just psych yourself up to go down. <gasps> no one, you're going to turn blue. You jump in there and go, I feel like going, ole! <laughs> My God. But you know what? I do it again. I don't care. I don't care where, where we go, what we do. I don't really care. That's a minor thing. Are you serious? So when I have heat, I never know where I'm going to go. Am I going to have heat here? If there's heat, that's a blessing. People, people complain, well, I, I don't quite, oh, <laughs> please, stop that. I, I just got my introduction. It's eight, I know I'm out of time. It's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, so much good stuff here. <laughs> Let me just say this. Now, listen, I want to get by where I can see your eyeballs. Let me explain about this new covenant. It's cut by the blood of Christ. We don't understand the word covenant because we don't understand what it means. But the word covenant means this. When I cut covenant with somebody else, even in a tribal, even in a natural sense, we cut either you put your blood in the cup, you put your blood together, there's all kinds of ways you do, but, but it's always blood, it always involves blood signifying this is the life of this individual being exchanged for the life of the other individual. But here's what it says, a covenant. Different than a word contract, different than the word agreement, different than other, any kind of partnership that's trash compared to covenant. It's the highest of the high, and God originated it. Every tribal person that you know that's doing it, they copied it from God, and unfortunately, it's all of it's degenerated. But here's what the covenant says. Here's what God says. When you cut with me, everything that I have is yours. Now think about this. When God gives himself, that's the best he's got. Do you understand that? Well, I need a car. With God, you can get any many cars you want. Follow the principles. Well, I need a business. With God, you can get anything you want. You got God. He gave you everything. And the Bible says he so, to make this covenant work, he had to give his son in order to make it come to pass. But then here's what the covenant says. We don't like this part. Everything that's in your life belongs to me. The money, the future, your body, your mind, your talents, your, everything. Your kids, they're mine. 100% mine. So here's what he says. This is the, this is the commander in chief, Jesus. Align your life with what I told you it's all about. Life's about lifting the curse of broken humanity through getting this Bible message out. 
If you want to operate in a covenant, you better operate what I ask you to do. If you don't, you're really violating the covenant. Therefore, I'm not obligated to fulfill everything that's in it because you're violating the very foundation of what it's all about. Jesus summed up the Bible. It's about repentance, remission of sins, and getting the message out. That's it. Anything else? You're getting too smart for yourself. And I don't know about you, I hold it very dear to my heart. Very real. Very, very real. One day, me, myself and I, nobody else, no parents, no wife, no kids, I will stand before Jesus Christ. I will kneel down. I will give an account. He said, what did you do with your life to bring about my covenant to pass on the earth? What did, what did you do? Well, Lord, you understood. I had kids to put through college, and uh, my car would get flats, and there was so much confusion, Lord, and then there was the internet, and that confused me, and then I got distracted by the news, and there's so many things going on, Jesus. You, under, you understand? He said, no, I don't understand. I don't understand. But you've got to understand this, that there are rewards in heaven. You're saved by grace, but you're rewarded for what you do. Does that make sense? People don't get that. You're, you're rewarded by how you obey. So missions is not a side issue. It's the issue. It's the issue. For every church, it's the issue. If you make it another issue, you're messed up. Your mind, just like I read in 1 Peter, 1 Timothy 6, 20 and 21, you got your mind caught up with trash. But if you kick over, say, God, I want to use my life to impact nations, use my gift, use my talent, and that becomes your focus. I promise you what will happen to you. You start kicking into the highest life you could ever live. Because all of us are called to have a part of it. And that's why young people quit church because they're bored. That's why people leave church because they're bored. You take a businessman, he feels more challenged about his business than church because he's not been given the challenge. Slap around, say, you, take a nation. Who, who me? Yeah, you. Take a nation. Man up. Buck up, buckaroo. Get a 501c3, raise the money, and go. And keep your business. You should be so busy, you don't have time to breathe hardly. Well, I don't want to retire. Don't even say that around me. Not where you've been where I've been. Not where you see what I've seen. And so too with you. So it can't be an emotional boo-hoo, blowing your nose out on an altar call because a lot of those people cry and they go right back to where they were. It's got to be cold turkey, my eyes wide open, and God is dropping this in my spirit. And it's got to become personal. To you. To you. You. What are you going to do? I know you're going to India. You're right. <laughs> to you. But let me just say this. This man gave it right here. I didn't even know that till tonight you shared that. He was in a funk. The mission trip defunct him. He got defunct and got healed. And he's a blessed businessman. I promise you, there's more 
for you in Jesus than you've ever tapped into. I promise you. Like Bahamas, we gotta get down there. I'm hooked up with mission. I was with Brother Rodney, he said, I will pay everything. All I need is somebody to get there. I said, I'm gonna get people. I said, I'm getting people. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can you imagine a church full of people? We're getting there. A church full of people that get it. They're not confused. Not mixed up. No, 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 no. There's none of, none of this stuff. They know what it's about. They understand. Why Jesus gave it in Matthew 28, 18, 19. Why he gave it in Mark 15. Go to all the world. Why he gave it in Luke's gospel chapter 24. You know, you think repetition would make the point. In John's gospel, he says, Even I, as I've been sent into the world, John 17, 18, as I've been sent into the world, I've, I send you into to the world. And then Acts 1, 8. You see power. Not you got to fall on the floor and shake like a rug. Me shake like a rat. You're not supposed to do that. It's not that, that's not what, that's wonderful to get shaken by the power of God. I'm not diminishing it. But the purpose is to get to get. Is have boldness to walk into nations. And I found this out the more I go. The more I go, the anointing increases. The more I grow, the authority increases. The more I grow, the miracles increase. The more I go, it's like God will grace you with what to say and how to do it. Remember I was in China, one thing, we were going from place to place. It's very clandestine. You don't know what's going on. You don't know what time of day it is. Sleep is a thing you don't get much of. And you're coming and going at a moment's notice. At a moment's notice. I'm sticking there. And he says, so he's go, well, get about an hour of sleep. I crash. About an hour or so later, he wakes up. Okay, you ready to go? What are, what are we doing? You're preaching. Now? Right outside that door, I said, in my, in my where I'm staying, so, and I'm, I'm doing this. Okay, Jesus. I open the door, and the place that was empty is wall to wall people, as far as I can see. And you've got to come up with a message. I'm still trying to wake up. <laughs> you know what I'm telling? But you know what? You just go to God. God, you know where I'm at. And I was on this shh from heaven. Three points. Dun, dun, dun. Thanks, Jesus. Here we go. <laughs> it's to the point where now, if I'm in a foreign country, I don't sweat it. I know if I'm out there doing what God says, I know it's coming. <laughs> that happened for you too. I keep pointing to the jets. Your last name is given you for a reason. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today for all that you've done through every team member here. Thank you for the souls that have been saved. Thank you for the healed lives, physically, mentally, spiritually. Thank you for the love we're able to pour out upon people that don't have much. Thank you for the opportunity to be a part of what you're doing in these end days. But oh God, we want to commit to going to the nations. We want to commit to what is valuable to you becomes valuable to us. And that Lord, help us as we prioritize our lives that we'll not keep the main thing the main thing. And the main thing is Jesus needs to be carried to the nations of the world because only Jesus can break the power of sin. Only Jesus can lift the curse. And as people come to know Jesus, whole nations, poverty can lift. Violence can be broken. Lord, just looking for willing vessels. 
know what God wants to, God gave us Isaiah 6 so we'd get the answer. God is such a cool God. He'll give the question, then he'll give the answer. So it's a guaranteed 100% passing. When he spoke from the throne of glory to Isaiah, he said, who will go for me? Whom shall I send? And Isaiah gave the right answer. It's written there. And this is the answer God wants out of you and I tonight. Here's what Isaiah said, Isaiah 6. He said, here I am, Lord. Send me. That's all God wants out of you tonight. Here I am, Lord. I can't figure it all out. I don't know how it's all going to work out. I don't even have all the ideas of of how it's going to transpire. I don't have the money. I don't have the time. Lord, but here I am, Lord. Send me. Send me. Use me. Gather in this great harvest. Use me, O oh God, that when my days are over on this planet, I will know that I laid it on the altar, my life, and I daily let God speak to me regarding my next steps. And that Jesus is no longer a side issue, but he is the issue in my life. Hallelujah. 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 Let's just stand to our feet, shall we? Let's make a consecration to the Lord. It's been a great night. I feel honored. I really do. I feel honored to be in a company of so many people that are not just talkers but are doers. It's just amazing. Hallelujah. Lift your hands up. We're going to make a dedicated prayer, a prayer dedication. We're going to pray Isaiah 6. If you don't want to pray the prayer, don't pray the prayer. This is a dangerous prayer. But if you want to be all in with God, pray the prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I've heard the word of God. I now know that you are calling me to the nations. That nations are needing me. And today, tonight, I say, here I am. Send me. me. Here I am. am. Use me. me. And as you fill me me. with the Holy Spirit, Spirit. give me your boldness. Give me your your courage. courage. And give me your strength strength. to move forward forward. and to make strong decisions that will put me in places that I can share Jesus Christ from with people from other cultures, other nations. Say it again, Lord. Say, Lord, here I am. Send me. Here I am. Use me for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's shout hallelujah three times. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are these passed out? I want you to take this. After all the shouting is over. Take this. It's out there. It's a pledge card. I want you to pray over it. Say, God, what part am I can I give monthly? Monthly. Everybody say Monthly. Start somewhere. Ten bucks a month. Well, about ten bucks. Okay, and it's a faith pledge, but stretch your faith. Do something that goes beyond where you can do in the natural. 
Faith pledge means I believe God as the money comes in, this is what I'll give. If it doesn't come in, you don't give it because it, it's a faith pledge. How many, how many know what I'm talking about? It's a faith pledge. You, you pledge by faith. It's not a bill, it's a faith pledge. And you pick out the month that you want to believe God for. You say, God, this is what I want to do for you. And what you'll do is you can either, uh, you can do an, for the month, uh, actually I'm trying to make this clear, for the year 2020, let's say 2020, from the 1st of January to the end of December, you can have this auto debited. You can might set the amount, it'll auto debit. Or you can just say, I want to do it monthly as I can. But you have that choice there. But um, when you're ready to fill this out, you can fill it out, put your name and thing, and you can slide it in the box, and you're done. That simple. It'll be available for the next two or three weeks. I just want to pass it out so people have a chance to pray over it. You know, you know what I'm saying? So it's not just a um, one-time thing. Are you excited? The, end, the possibilities in Jesus' name are endless. It's just... All right, if you are dismissed, if you need prayer, come forward. My wife will pray for you. <laughs> or any of my deacons. If you have your deacon or elders, if you could stick around, they want to, we're extending it. If you need prayer, come forward.